Hello, you're watching Telecom TV series on the Open RAN Vanguard, inside the TELUS Open RAN transformation. In this special series of programs, we'll give you an exclusive inside view of the Open RAN transformation at TELUS, sharing the telco's future vision and its journey as it unfolds. Be sure to register your interest so you don't miss out on any of these programs, and we'll keep you updated on all new content as it's released. As one of the industry's first major telcos to deploy Open RAN, TELUS has brought together manufacturers and providers to create a modular, state-of-the-art wireless network. In this second executive interview, we'll be asking why it's time to leave traditional RAN behind. And joining me to explain is my special guest, Bernard Bureau, VP Wireless Strategy and Services at TELUS. Hello, Bernard. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having me today. Today, we're going to explore the evolution of open RAN technology to date and look ahead to future deployments. So let's start by asking where we are now and based on TELUS experience, how would you assess the current maturity level of open RAN technology in real world deployments? Well, it's, it's interesting. Integrating uh, ORAN in our network has been uh, uh, quite interesting. In fact, not as difficult as we thought. Telcos have been doing uh, cloud network functions for a while now. So automatically setting up the or HP server with Wind River OS and Conditor Platform. And network connectivity was not something new for us. And we treated the setup of the RAN function itself with the right configuration as a great opportunity to advance our automation and really achieve zero touch provisioning for the first time. This is the part that is more challenging in the brownfield environment because you have to adapt to all the various existing databases and systems to make the end-to-end -end process work. But because we've been running Samsung Network's traditional run, many items were almost business as usual, like the virtual CU operation, for example, and many aspects of the operational metrics. And in terms of uh, network performance and reliability, we're very happy. The Samsung Network's virtual CU and DU meets or exceeds or all our KPIs from our traditional run. And I think this is due both because we have feature parity between the traditional run and virtual run that Samsung provides us, as well as Samsung's implementation of its uh, layer one um, uh, implementation on, on the Intel Sapphire Rapids EE platform. And lastly, in terms of availability, we've also reached our target. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this was all perfect the first day, uh, but overall it went pretty smoothly, certainly much more smoother than what we had anticipated. We did encounter some problems, of course, but the important thing is that we were able to quickly resolve them. And with our motivated technology partners like Samsung Networks, Wind River, Intel, HP, and many others, we were able to do just that. Focusing on those achievements, what key milestones has TELUS achieved in its Open RAN implementation? And what does your experience to date tell us about the technology's readiness for widespread adoption? In late summer 2024, so last year, we completely pivoted our deployment from traditional RAN to Open RAN. And it means that since then, we are deploying the Opera architecture for the entirety of our outdoor network deployment. And that's very meaningful for TELUS at this point in time, because we are in the process of replacing our entire radio network. So we're a bit more than half of the way done. So the remaining part of our network will, will be all run by the end of 2027. And we will revisit also the recent traditional run sites that we've, uh, that we've implemented, so that by the end of 2029, 100% of our network is going to be ORAN. So to answer the question very specifically, we are of the opinion that the technology is ready for widespread adoption, including for brownfield operators and complex networks such as TELUSes. We're using ORAN with a full set of feature. We have nine bands of LTE and three of NR, and we have 45 cells per site, and it's growing. From a TELUS perspective, what are the most significant technical challenges that still need to be addressed in open RAN technology? Yeah, well, I think the level, I think the level of maturity for the non-real-time RIC needs to improve. Uh, I mean, 
we have choices, but very little deployments yet uh, that we can see. Uh, we believe that 2025 uh, is a year where we're going to see a lot of progress. And at Telus, we're deploying the non-real-time RIC this year. So we're, we're going to be one of those uh, deployments. Another area is the SMO. There will be uh, always some parts of the SMO that are custom to operators. And we've been able to achieve great things with zero-touch provisioning. But I find that the industry still has important improvements to achieve to fully move away from the legacy OSS constructs. Many interfaces are lacking maturity. They are not fully defined, you know, and more work is needed to completely eliminate any proprietary implementations. What improvements or advancements in Open RAN technology has TELUS observed over the past few years, and what does this suggest about its future trajectory? Yeah, well, I, I, looking back the last few years, I can only say, wow. There's been an incredible progress in, the, uh, you know, in those uh, last few years. Certainly, the Sapphire Rapids EE platform is the first one where we can deploy our virtual DU without any external accelerator and still achieve parity on space and power with traditional run. Um, now, we also have an extremely solid and mature con container platform and OSS OS that is fully adapted to the run network function, works really, really well. And as I said a minute ago, we're achieving an overall availability level that meets our requirements. I, I would say also that the uh, open frontal is also quite mature and completing the interoperability between an RU and a DU of a different supplier is no longer a, a source of concern, specifically for 44R or 88R radios. I think we've reached a point in 2024, uh, last year, where ORAN is as capable as traditional RAN for both 4G and 5G without using any proprietary hardware. That was fundamental, but now in 2025 and beyond, we're really going to be able to extract a ton of benefit from the ORAN architecture. The non-real-time RIC will provide an incredible value for closed-loop automation. It's going to be so much easier than using a centralized SUN platform. The choices for any of the open run building blocks are increasing. We are going into an era where operators can truly assign their run business on merit and not on incumbency. What timeline do you foresee for open RAN technology to reach parity with or surpass traditional RAN solutions? I'm going to do that, uh, but I'm also going to you know, provide a little bit of point of view of TELUS about where the industry needs to go. In order to properly conclude on this topic, I, I want to highlight that TELUS is a big operator in Canada, but we're quite small compared to some US, European, or Asian operators. And despite our small size, and uh, you know, when, especially when compared to those large global peers of ours, and despite the high complexity of our network, we were able to implement open run and virtual run without any proprietary hardware in a brownfield environment. And today, this is the only type of open run deployment that we're doing. Performance is great, availability is great, and we're really happy with where we are. So my, my message to my peers globally is that this ecosystem is ready today for all types of deployment, urban or rural, greenfield or brownfield, low or high network complexity. ORAN needs to become the norm for all 4G and 5G equipment suppliers, for all the interfaces, including the open frontal, and without any proprietary hardware. My comment applies to both the technical aspect and the commercial aspect of Open RAN. No one in the past 15 or 20 years questioned the viability of a multi-supplier environment between the RAN and the core. It needs to become the same for all the Open RAN building blocks. Well, we have to leave it there, but Bernard, thank you very much for sharing your views with us today. My pleasure. And if you enjoyed this program, then please watch the other featured content in this series. We'll be back following MWC with the third installment of the series on the Open RAN Vanguard inside the TELUS Open RAN transformation before concluding the series with an in-depth panel discussion and an exclusive report from Appledore Research. To make sure you don't miss the release of these videos, register your interest and sign up at our website. That's also the place where you'll find further information about the series along with links to all related content. For now, thank you for watching the Open RAN Vanguard inside the TELUS Open RAN Transformation.